have been in Australia for? Oh, probably about three years. Welcome to this episode of The Gunman. This video here is part three on the Corvette Stingray that I've done. It'll be covering the clear coat stage. So I've done two other videos prior covering the prep work, masking, and the base coat stage. So as you can see there, I've got a bucket of warm water and I've heated my clear coat up. This is a pretty handy trick to use in the colder months. Um, I, my booth here doesn't actually have a heater in it, so it's got no burner. Um, so we're just running on ambient temperature all year round and basically by heating the paint up It's doing a couple of things. It's helping it dry and it's also thinning it down So because I'm using a high solid clear HS clear, it's quite thick um, Especially when it's colder, but heating it up is going to thin that down So I'm mixing it up here at a two to one ratio two parts uh, clear coat one part hardener. I've heated the hardener up as well. Um, and you'll be able to see the temperature I've got once it's mixed. I think it was around the 60 degrees. Anyone who's tried painting two-pack paints in the cold weather before will know that it's prone to running. So this also helps it stop running because it's able to dry out that little bit quicker. Basically, it'll only really take three or four minutes in between coats. Now I'm using a fast hardener here as well. Another advantage of heating your clear up is that when you use thinners or reducer to thin your clear down, you're actually breaking that clear down. So in a way, yeah, it, it, there's nothing wrong with putting a little bit of reducer in your clear. I do it uh, quite often, um, but yeah, you do uh, lose a little bit of gloss when you do do that. Um, it might look really good off the gun, and then you might come in the next morning and find it sort of dulled off a bit. But I've found when you heat your clear up, you'll actually get less chance of that. Anyway, we're about to start spraying, so I'll give you guys a run through the gun settings I'm using. This is my Sata Jet 5000B RP. It's got the 1.3mm fluid tip on it, so the way I set this thing up is open that fan right up and then come back in maybe just a quarter of a turn. You can see I'm winding it in a little bit more now just to get the inside of that um, vent there. I've set the fluid at three turns out, so put that fluid right in. There's a little uh, notch out of it and you'll be able to gauge, go three full turns out. When I first started using this gun, I was running about two and a half, um, but this job here, I want this one to be really flat. I want it to come up like glass, so I've wound that fluid out a bit. Um, I wouldn't want to come out too far. I'd be scared to put a little bit too much material on and end up a little bit too orange purely um, but yeah so uh, pressure I've actually been turning up a little bit as well um, the first couple of jobs I used this Sata Jet for I was running at about 0.9 or 1 bar but I've jumped it up to about 1.3 bar for this job and got some real nice uh, results with it and the next two settings are distance and speed I guess so I I can't tell you the exact distance because I never usually get a measuring stick out and measure it, but I would say that would be sitting at about six or seven centimeters. That's just at a guess, give or take. And speed, that's just determined on the kind of finish that you want. You've really just got to get your eye into that wet edge and look at the paint going on. I guess that's more technique than a setting though. So the bulk of this video is actually unedited. I've just chopped and added a couple of little bits like the start and the end. Apart from that, I'll just let it run and I'll narrate you guys through it. Hopefully I can keep you guys interested for the entire video. Hopefully I can think of something fresh to talk about the entire video too. Uh, I do apologize if it goes in and out of focus. Uh, it's hard for me to know when it's on my head, the camera's on my head. It's hard for me to know exactly where it is focusing. But I think all in all, it come up quite nice. And I'm definitely very happy with the way this car came up. I will be making another video on this, which is the polishing and detailing stage. Those who have been watching this series will remember in the base coat stage, I was telling you guys that I used a bit of an acrylic primer over those spots that you can see those circles on these pop-up lights. And I was saying that not to worry because the clear coat will fix it up. Um, and as you saw just then, there was those rings before I put the clear on it. After I put the clear on it, you would not know they're there at all. There might be a little bit uh, just 
after you clear it in the top of the clear coat, which will be able to be polished out, but you'll never be able to actually set it in the colour, so it's not an issue. Um, I did make a mention too that if it was a silver, I would probably sand it out, and you'd want that base coat to look 100% before you clear over it. Um, you can also clear coat over a couple of scratches in blacks. Um, it's something that, you know, not everyone may know. Um, most solid colours are the same. Uh, however, the metallics are the ones that you really got to be careful for. I still remember the first time I found that out. I think I was like a first or second year apprentice. I, was, I used to always paint the insides of the hoods or the bonnets for the tradesmen. And we used to put the panels back on the car back in those days. And um, yeah, I told the tradesman, I said, oh mate, there's scratches all through the um, inside of this uh, bonnet here. He told me just to clear over it, and I was like, no, you can't do that, you'll be able to see it after you finish, mate. And he goes, no, mate, seriously, just trust me, clear over it against, you know, I just, I just had to take his advice because he was the experienced man, put the clear coat over it, and I was a little bit surprised, I must admit, but um, hey, if you don't know it, you don't know it, but yeah, it's more those metallics that you have to worry about. So here you go, you can see I'm just having a bit of a top up and continue back on with the job. So I'll give you guys a bit of a quick rundown of the preparation I've done in my spray booth before I started painting. I've given it a good sweep out. I've also uh, wet the floors down and just spread it around, made sure it's not too big of a puddle so I don't um, flick that airline up and have the um, water land in my panel because that's never a good thing. Um, this spray booth here, look, I wouldn't say it's the best spray booth out, but I can still get pretty good results out of it. Um, so obviously the air comes in one end and goes out the other, so it's not a full downdraft, it's a semi-downdraft. It's only got a filter up one end of the booth where it comes in and then down the other end it blows through to the rear of this car. Now, I have found that you end up getting these uh, circles and turbulence in the booth which ends up your overspray goes up and then lands back on the car and turns into dust on the car. So it's not necessarily that you've done your prep work bad at all, but sometimes you do get a few bits of dust in it. Nothing that won't polish out, so it's not a big deal. But um, in these fenders, I did get a couple of bits of dust. I mean, it wasn't that bad, but yeah, a little bit more than what I would usually like. And if it was a full downdraft booth, I would give you just about a 90% uh, definite that the way I prepared this job, um, it wouldn't have ended up with anywhere near that much dust in it. Um, it's just, I do the best I can with what I've got to work with. And yeah, you treat your uh, tools and equipment right and they'll keep working for you for a long time. So I do look after my spray booth and I keep it serviced um, maybe about every six months so far, depending on how much we use it. Uh, if it gets really dirty then I'll give it a full service and change those filters. But um, I'm waiting on a follower of mine, Dave Paisley, to finish his home spray booth and get me some photos so I can actually give you guys a video on myself servicing this booth because I'd like to include a couple of photos from Dave in that video as well. I do know there's a lot of people out there, DIYers and stuff like that, who'd be definitely benefit from um, the way that Dave's done his. I've seen a few pics of uh, the progress where he's up to, and he's definitely done it right. He's put filters in it, he's got exhaust extraction fans, but make no mistake, it's not cheap. It's something that he loves spray painting, so he's done it because this is going to last him for the rest of his life, and he'll be able to get out there and paint some shit whenever he wants. You probably noticed that I jacked this car up too before I painted it because it's one continual panel, both fenders, the front panel, and also the lower valance panel, uh, the lower front panel. Um, so I had to jack it up so I could get a nice good coat all the way under there. So that just about finishes off our first coat. Now in between coats I kept that clear one as you may remember from the start. It was this car exactly here that I'd learnt myself a lesson and I'd wasted about a litre of paint. So you can see in here it's sitting at about 60 degrees in between coats. I decided to go out for 10 minutes and just leave it and let it go nice and tuck off in between coats and come back and that clear had just started going off. I had to tip it out, start again and mix up some new clear coat. The reason I thought I was going to be fine is because there was another time that I was using the Duke's Home Plus clear with Fast Harden also and it was actually fine in the pot for two hours after and I still had it 
quite warm up to the 60 degrees once mixed so look it will vary from clear to clear I guess but unfortunately this time here it went off and I uh, just started to go to jelly in the gun so I got the gun cleaned out before it did any damage. Painting is one of those things that you're forever learning new tricks and what does and doesn't work. Anybody who thinks that they know absolutely everything about spray painting is only really kidding themselves. You've got good painters and average painters. I'd say one of the criteria of being a good painter is uh, versatility, being able to work in different environments. Um, that's not just uh, temperatures, it's also workshops, you know, how long will it take you to uh, get the hang of a system, like say a paint system as well. But um, yeah, one thing I did find about this concept clear, it went on really nice, it held a nice gloss overnight, but then it was still like tacky for days after. Like it was, I painted this on the Wednesday and it took until the following Tuesday till it was actually buffable. We uh, tried polishing it, we thought we'd leave it on the Thursday, leave it out in the sun for a day. Come in on the Friday, tried to de and polish and it was really still w quite wet and we just couldn't polish it. But then finally on the Tuesday it just snapped and we were able to give it a real good buff up. I was at the point where I was saying to my business partner, like, man, we've got to flow coat this. It, it's just not going to go hard. It was just staying real gooey. Yeah, I was just about to mix up a bit of Duke Zone Clear, give it a buzz down, flow coat it. But um, yeah, it ended up snapping, it went off polished up quite nice in the end and it's definitely um, a good finish. This video is actually dedicated to Alistair McNeil or Alistair McNeil. I hope you're watching. Uh, this guy here uh, made a comment on my Facebook page and he said, Hi, your vids are ace. Will it be another one on the Black Stingray base clear and polish stages? That's sometimes that's all I need to get the motivation to continue on a project. So um, that motivated me. I come home from work and I just spent a couple of hours finishing the editing work and getting this narration done. As always, uh, be sure to leave comments and questions. Uh, understand if I can't get back to everyone. It doesn't mean that I haven't read it. So requests and stuff like that, they're always welcome. Bit of feedback's always welcome. If you think there's anything I can do to make my videos better, I'm always strong to improve my videos. I love spray painting. I also love this channel that I've created on YouTube. Um, it's all over everything else by now. As you guys probably already know, I'm all over Instagram, Facebook, and all that stuff. I've actually started working on my own website as well, where what I've decided to do on that is just some blogs. So I'll just um, take lots of photos of the cars that I've been painting and then do a bit of a write-up. So what I might even do is um, Google Translate that because I know I've got people from different languages and they've asked me, oh, can you please do this uh, video but in Spanish? So uh, what I'll do is the common languages like that. If you do have a look at it though, um, just bear in mind I am just starting with it so there's not that much content on there at the moment. I've only really done one blog and I haven't even shared it yet. So it's in its early stages but the best way to keep in touch with that kind of thing is just follow me on Facebook because I'll be sharing um, all the stuff uh, through Facebook. So check us out there. I'm also having heaps of fun on Instagram these days. Um, yeah, I would post probably about five or ten pics a day. This week I've been moving on and just so flat out with this car. I've been working on a 75 LH Tirana and I've done that in matte black finish. So my f uh, Facebook and Instagram followers will know all about that and hopefully I'll be able to get onto the editing of that video soon. I've got loads and loads of footage of that one. I've got a bit of a love for those cars. I've actually owned one of them myself so hopefully one day I'll actually get that thing over here and get stuck into that as my next project after I get into that VL. Which is still getting worked on when I get the time but it's yeah it's hard to get the chance to work on my own car these days because everyone else wants their car done by the gunman. So the main reason I actually bought this Sider Jet 5000 was simply 
because of this YouTube channel I've got. If it wasn't for the YouTube channel, I would have just been like, you know what, I don't need it. Um, I, and I didn't need it. I've, I've got heaps of good guns already. But it, I, I totally love it. I've fallen in love with it. I never liked the 4000, the start of 4000s. Um, I did use the NR2000 once. That was a totally really nice gun. Um, I think the early on in the piece, uh, in the gun man, everyone thought that I was anti sada it's not that I'm anti sada it's that I really just didn't like those 4000s and it was the first SATA I had ever actually used for clear over base. So when I had the 4000s sitting next to my GTI Pro or Pro Lite, um, to me it was a pretty simple decision to go for the GTI Pro. Um, I actually do plan on doing a bit of a Gun Wars video, so head to head. I've decided I'm going to do it when I'm painting my own car on that VL Commodore. I'm going to paint, say, one side with one gun, the other side with the other gun, and see how much paint they go through, the kind of finish they get, and just do a really in-depth review on the SATA Jet 5000 versus the Devilbus GTI Pro Lite. Um, I might even see if I can incorporate my Iwata Bellaria um, in that review as well. So maybe, say, paint the a uh, couple of panels with the Bell Aria too. I'm yet to use the Segolas yet, but I really would like to get the Segola 4500 Extreme Clear Gun. Um, they look like a good gun, and I'd definitely like to review it. Let me know your favorite spray gun in the comments section. It's always an interesting topic for me. I'm definitely looking forward to uh, the day that Devilwis decides to bring out a new gun. Um, but yeah, let's just say about this starter, this is a perfect example of German engineering at its finest. They got it right here. Um, the only one thing that I will say that I don't like about this SATA is that your thumb, the way your thumb actually sits, you can see it in this uh, frame right here, it sits right on the uh, fan control. Um, it's just where your thumb naturally sits. So I've actually found myself sometimes tweaking that fan control just a little bit as I'm painting. It hasn't made a catastrophic disaster yet. I mean, and I can't say that it would because you don't give it a full turn, but just that little bit, it's enough to sort of sort of throw you off a little bit and stop you from concentrating on what you're painting and uh, a little bit on that fan control and adjusting it. But um, all in all, it sprays really nice. But for the price tag, you'd want it to spray nice. Uh, I got mine, I think the cheapest out on eBay, and that was about $780, I think I paid. That's uh, shipped to Australia. I've seen them go for, $1,200 if you buy them from Australia. Now someone's obviously pumping that price up somewhere along the line. I just don't see a gun worth that much to me. It's simply not worth that much to me. $500, $600 is about the top I would usually spend on a spray gun. Um, when you've got guns out there like the Devilbus SGK, which is also known as FLG5, I'd happily spray clear on a car like this and get probably just exactly the same finish with a $200 spray gun as what you can with a $1,200 spray gun. So I really don't see that a spray gun is worth that much. Drop your prices, you'd probably sell more guns. And yeah, that, that's my advice to Sardi Jet. But they're a beautiful gun. I don't regret buying it because I did get it at a good price. And it's great to finally own a Sada and a Sada that I really like. But anyway, that's just about wrapping this job up now. Just finishing off this last little bit of clear. And then I'll give you guys a good look over the entire job. And a finalized look at it once it's all been polished up. And it's out the front ready to be picked up by the customer. Obviously the next step after this was to give the gun a good clean out. Which I have actually other videos if you'd like to check through my other videos. I've got loads of videos. It's just about anything you can think about in spray painting. I think I've already got one out there. Look, there's a few that I still haven't done, um, but yeah, I'll be getting on to them. Now, those who remember in the base coat video, I had a little drip of um, base coat hit that bonnet. I decided not to sand it out and paint it, but you can see here that there's only a really slight imp imperfection there, which will be able to be polished out, but I loaded that clear up right over that bonnet. Look, there's a couple of little bits of dust in it, but all in all, that's something 
that's uh, a good paint job. I mean, I'm definitely happy with how that looks off the gun. It held a nice gloss uh, the next morning, and it definitely buffed up nicer on that uh, Tuesday I was telling you guys about. Um, look, it's a nice finish. It's got no runs on it. The orange peel matched the rest of the car. The rest of the car had been sprayed again. Um, it's been painted a few times, this old girl. It's from uh, Texas, so... Big shout out to Texas. It's only been over here for three years now in Australia, and um, it's definitely welcome. The owner of this actually had a front end accident. Um, he then got a front end shipped over from the States. He got paid out from his insurance company, and then he repaired the car himself. Uh, and then he just got us to finish off the filler repairs, prime, and uh, final coat of paint and polish. Obviously, we gave the entire car a detail for him too so because i put that clear coat so wet on that bonnet because i put so much on there i decided to peel this masking off straight away so that if that clear decided to flow around those edges it's not going to bridge up on that tape so there it is when it's all finished off looking real nice i spent about a full best part of a full day on the detail cut and polish side of things so that will be in the next video when i get around to it Hopefully the owner will bring it back down once he's finished putting it back together. That was part of the deal. We just did the panel and paint side of things and he's going to finish putting all these bumper bars back together and headlights back in and all that kind of stuff. Definitely a beautiful old car and as you can see there, that colour match is just about perfect. That was just a straight tinter NM37. Thanks for watching this video. I really hope you guys have enjoyed it as much as I've enjoyed making it. If you appreciate the time and effort I've put into this vid, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button. Thanks for watching, and this has been another Gunman production. Get out there and paint some shit, guys!